Morning everyone, uh, here we are this morning in the Cotswolds. Uh, we're going to have a bit of pike fishing on some of the local gravel pits. Um, as you can probably see, it's a bit of a chilly start to the morning. This is uh, minus one this morning, so our first, first frost round here. Um, but primarily, today I want to show you through what I call finesse pike fishing. We'll go through all the kit required, why I use it, what lures I use, uh, and when it's a good time to use it. So um, keep tuned. At the end of the video, we're going to have a little competition. Um, so keep watching, pay attention, and um, yeah, I'll talk you through all the gear we're going to use. There's the first fish hooked. So as you can see, a lovely misty morning here. And we're um, started on the finesse pike fishing. We've missed a couple. We've hooked one. So we'll see if we can get him in and uh, show you the kit we're using. Just grab a net. Lovely start. So we have the first fish of the day. Um, it's no monster, but just goes to show that the technique we're using works very, very efficiently. Um, unfortunately, I've missed a couple of bites already. Um, there is a good reason why we're fishing where we are and we'll go through that in a minute but um, yeah fantastic start. So we haven't been fishing for long this morning probably only half an hour 40 minutes um, we've landed one but I've missed probably five or six bites and I'm pretty sure they're pike because the um, the lure's being ripped to pieces. Um, I don't normally fish a stinger on these little baits, on this finesse setup, um, but I think I might have to try. I think it's actually just too early in the morning. Then they're, they're really funny little bites. They're not savaging it, just sort of tail nipping. So we might, um, first of all, we'll go and put a new hook on, see whether a nice new sharp hook does it. And secondly, if that doesn't, we'll put a small little two or three inch stinger on and just see if we if they're tail nipping and see if we can get that extra fish. So that could be why we're uh, missing a few bites, because if they are this sort of size, then even with my little finesse lures, it's still quite a big bait to um, to get in their gob. So that could be why we're missing a few. You know, these smaller fish might be on the feed this morning and the bigger ones once the water temperature warms up a little bit. But uh, we'll see. Let's go and get that hook changed, see if we can convert a few more. Right then guys, as you've probably seen, I've had one or two fish already this morning. Um, I've missed a lot of bites and I'm gonna change, change my hook up. But while I'm doing so, I just thought I'd run you through my finesse gear and what finesse pike fishing is. I suppose finesse pike fishing really is just scaled down pike fishing gear or scaled up perch fishing gear, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, I've been using it to great success on some of these gravel pits, on the local canals, the small rivers. Um, it's great technique really for catching small to medium sized pike. I'm not saying go out onto Rutland or go out onto Grafham and start using this finesse gear. Uh, if you're fishing for the big fish, stick with your traditional heavy duty pike gear. Finesse pike fishing, let's start the rod I'm using a um, Terminator jigger. This is just a 15 to 50 grams. Um, it's got a nice soft action, it's 2.4 metres, um, 
Today that's quite important on these gravel pits. We're primarily fishing along the drop-off, but we want to make quite long casts along the drop-off and bring the lure back. So um, that extra length just, just allows us to be able to cast a bit further. Um, simple two and a half thousand. This is the Prism X. Um, fantastic value for money. Great little reel. Perfect for what we need here. Um, that's loaded up with 15 pound braid. So again, this might sound quite light, but we're not fishing for particularly big fish here today. And we are after a very balanced, lightweight setup. Um, so that 15, 15 pound braid is absolutely fine. From there, I really like to go to a fluoro leader. So this is actually 16 pound. This is our um, drop and jig, which uh, brilliant fluorocarbon, very invisible in the water, but also very, very strong. So that 16 pound just gives me, you know, I've only got what, three, three foot here, just gives me that distance between the bait and my braid. Um, these gravel pits are extremely clear. And I just think that extra little again finesse element to the to the setup just gives us a, a added advantage um, from there i go down to not too short but it's a 30 centimeter um, wire trace obviously it's you know it's essential to use wire you can use thick fluorocarbon but if you do so you're not really staying with the finesse side of things you're going back to you know your big traditional big pike fishing gear um, this is only six kilos. Um, they're extremely good for what we're doing today. One thing that I am prepared to do is get through plenty of traces in a day. If this starts to show signs of wear and tear, um, just, you know, cut it off, put a new one on, replace it with a fresh one, which is what I do now. Um, as I said, I seem to have missed a few bites, which um, is a new hook this morning. It still feels pretty good. I will change the hook. Um, I'm not convinced it's a blunt hook while I'm missing bites. I think it's still very early in the morning. The fish aren't really fully active at the moment and I'm just getting little tail nippers and as you've seen, some of the pike are only small. So um, I will get that changed up and we'll see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't, then I will add a small stinger. Um, but as you can probably see, this is the size baits I'm using. So the finesse pike fishing this is 10 centimetres, 10 centimetre um, pro shad. Probably one of my favourite baits for doing this style of fishing. Um, it's got a great action to it. Very, very lifelike um, coloration and just, you know, perfect for these, um, these smaller fish. At the moment, I'm only fishing with a um, five gram. I'm actually going to change up to seven grams. Um, it's a two or a three O, perfect size for these small, small baits. The key is small baits and that that's the key um, why is it the key there's a couple of reasons in my mind one there's huge huge shoals of small roach in here um, so the fish or the pike are feeding on snacks as opposed to like a three course meal um, and two a lot of these day ticket waters and waters that are very very accessible to people they get a lot of pressure today we're after a bit of fun Lots of bites, hopefully, quite a few fish, and this is just absolutely perfect for it. So we're just casting up along the marginal shelf here in these gravel pits. It's a couple of foot deep, 18 inches, two foot in the margins, just goes out for sort of a rod length and then a real steep drop down to 12, 14 foot. And um, these pike are just patrolling up and down, down this marginal shelf. Um, we've got loads and loads of bait fish here. That's actually why, why we're fishing here. Um, before we started this morning, we had a quick walk around the lake and it was very, very misty and um, it was hard to see a lot. But as we come round, this part of the lake in particular. Oh, there's a fish. And that stinger could well have uh, got us that extra fish there. So yeah, whereas we were coming around the lake, we've seen loads and loads of um, little roach fry. And that's why we've set up here. And it would be absolutely perfect for our finesse system to, um, to imitate the small fry that, that the pike are feeding on. 
down to the river. Every man has felt the shame. All our blood, it runs the same. Father, hear us as we pray. So there we have it. Pike number three in the morning. Um, I think, you know, looking at the size of it, this is why we're missing a few because, um, you know, they are just snapping at it and we're getting a lot of tail hits. Um, but, you know, first cast of a little stinger and it's, um, it's got us another fish. So, you know, if you are getting bites and you're missing them, then try and work out why. We've changed the jig head to put a sharper hook on. Um, I missed the bite straight away, put a stinger on and it's worked. So, oh, there we go. Quick release, straight back in. We're stood in the water, so there's no harm done. Um, let's get back out there and see if we can get another one. Fish. <sighs> this is what we've come out for today. This is what finesse fishing is about. It's about getting lots of bites and um, enjoying your fishing, not necessarily fishing for big, big fish. Hopefully we might get a better one today. But I mean, you know, it's early morning. We're having fun. And um, this is fish number four. So we're in the water here, and um, certainly now that I've put a treble on, I try to avoid using the landing net where possible. I don't want them thrashing about in there with the treble hanging out. Um, that stinger, again, as much as the main hook's got it, let me just grab my... And one thing I would say is I've just, that little stinger I've put on, it's a little tiny barbless stinger. We're fishing so small and quite small fish, we don't want any, any trouble unhooking them. And there we go, pike number four in the morning. Finesse fishing for pike. Down to the river. Just nick. I think that was a perch. Oh, and again. Oh. Steady on track. Fish on. <laughs> Rip that track out. Yeah. I could say that actually. Is that recording, is it? Yeah, yeah. So you can probably hear that the um the drag was going as I'm striking there, but to be honest, part of this finesse gear, you know, you're only fishing light, and um, we don't want to be pulling the hooks out of these little fish's mouths. So it doesn't matter if we miss a couple on the strike as well. Let's just got a bit of a treble there. Tangled, can you believe that? Now it's out. There we go. We've just seen a fish. Oh. We've just seen a fish crash into the margins, crashing into these um, roach. I just flicked one right up the margins. That can only be two foot maximum. So we can just take our time. You know, we're only on light gear here. Just take her time, we've got no snags in the way. To be honest, none of them are going to be record breakers, so if we lose the odd one, we're not too, too concerned about it. Ah, oh, it's off. Oh well, there we go. That's what I was saying, we can take our time. We lose the odd one. That was a slightly better fish, probably um, might have been a scraper double, but um, there's plenty of fish out here, so see if we can get another one. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're having a bit of fun this morning. I was just about to tell you about our retrieves and what I'm doing. Um, don't get the opportunity. We've got a little strapper here. We've just lost that better fish and um, 
first car straight after. We got a little babby. Nice catch and release and gone. So we'll see if we can get a bit of talking in, in between these fish. Um, you've probably seen, I'm just really, it's almost like I'm perch fishing. I'm putting a few turns on the handle and um, letting it fall. I'm only fishing five grams. So once we're over this marginal shelf and we're in 12, 14 foot of water, we've got quite a good slow fall then. And it is just falling down this shelf. Um, if we, Later on in the day, as the fish might move out, we might put seven grams on or 10 grams and fish a bit further. But certainly um, this morning, we'll just concentrate on this marginal shelf. Um, the majority of the time, as I've said, I've put in a couple of turns of the handle and letting it fall through the water. Um, but it is worth just mixing it right up so you can have a nice steady retrieve. In fact, we could try that now, but a nice steady retrieve or maybe five turns of the handle, one turn, just keep mixing it up. Uh, I also find sometimes if you put a few turns of the handle on and just as it's falling, just give it one little jig. It sometimes just gives them enough just to, uh, if they're following it, just to get in there and commit to, to, to taking that lure. Um, but certainly the majority of the bites this morning have been on that fall, just as you'd expect perch fishing. Um, but yeah, just keep mixing the retrieve up and, um, and just keep persevering. We haven't had to persevere very much this morning. We got a lot of fish here, um, but we'll go into that in a second as to why I think a lot of those fish are here. Oh. Savage that right up the margins. It's on the stinger. So earlier on I was saying about the importance of this um, little stinger today. There it is. We wouldn't have got that fish without it. Tiny little barbless stinger just in the corner of the mouth there. They're chunky little fish. I'd like to tell you what number of pike that is this morning, but I must say I've lost count. <laughs> We're having a great little session catching lots of these little pike and um, you know this just just really clarifies that this finesse pike fishing really does work. So primarily this morning we fished with the um, with the roach pattern in this 10 centimeter um, pro shad my reasoning for this is it's a very natural looking bait um, in this crystal clear water i think you want to go as natural as possible nothing too bright not the fire tiger patterns um, so this roach one and the the real perch is also another very very good clear water bait um, this has been absolutely savage this one this morning but um, the roach pattern seems to be working particularly well today um, because this morning before we started fishing i've done a full lap of the lake, um, having a look for any signs of any fish on these these big gravel pits. I mean, this is, I don't know, 100 acres plus. Um, they can be quite hard to find, but if, they, if they're all shoaled up for a reason and you can find them, you can have some great sport like we've had today. And um, my reasoning for fishing in this part of the lake today is the huge shoals of little tiny two, three inch ropes that we've seen. Um, they're all in the margins. We saw a pike attacking them. That to me is all I needed. You know, that's, that's my day's fishing sorted. I fish in and around that area for the day. Um, it's not even lunchtime yet. I honestly don't know what we've had. I think 10 pike, probably lost as many. Um, as you've seen, we're not, I'm not trying to um, break any records. I'm not fussed if I lose a fish or two, um, but just great, great sport on this light gear. So as I was saying, these um, supernatural colours, the roach and the perch, they're absolutely perfect for this um, clear water conditions. But if you're 
local venue, be it the river, canal, wherever, is carrying a bit more colour, then um, there's plenty of colours in the range that can stand out in this more murky water. Um, you know, we've got the fire tigers and um, even some of the some of the more natural colours where they've got a bright, brighter tail or a really white flashy belly. All of them will work really, really well with a bit of extra colour. Um, if it's really coloured, I maybe I wouldn't be fishing soft plastic. I might be fishing, you know, a chatter bait or a spinner bait. Um, but I think they're just too overpowering for clear water situations like we've got today. Um, for me, just yeah, you just can't beat match the hatch. You now we've seen loads and loads and loads of roach. We've had all the fish this morning on the roach pattern. Um, I will go over and try a couple of the others just to see. But while I'm still catching, there's not much point changing today. So we're probably coming up for about lunchtime now. We've fished um, a bit further down the lake most of the morning. And we've come up here, a bit of a change of scenery, and just, um, just to see how we can get on. A bit further down the lake, we're seeing loads and loads and loads of fry in the margins. And to be honest, I don't know what I've had, but 10 plus pike missed plenty, um, loads of action. And um, where well, we've moved up the lake, we've just, we've had one, um, but no other hits, no other takes, no other follows. And we haven't seen any, any fry at all in the margins. So it just really goes to show that um, location is absolute key. Doesn't matter whether it's on a gravel pit like we are today, on a canal, river, small pond, wherever you are, it's absolute location. You know, we're probably, 50 yards away from where we started this morning and we've had one fish. Uh, where we started this morning, we've had 10 plus, plus loads of other hits, loads of other takes. Um, but those pike are there because the, the, the food source is there. So you're as well sometimes just to spend a bit of time in the morning and just um, scout out your water, even if it's a local water that you're really familiar with. I'm very familiar with this lake. Um, I wouldn't normally fish this area and I've only fished this area because we've, we've found the bait fish here. So, you know, do the same yourselves. Have a good look about. If you see little fish dimpling, just keep an eye out. You know, they're dimpling for a reason quite often because there's predators underneath them pushing them up. So, yeah, just, um, you know, keep your eyes peeled and that's that location is the key to everything. So I think that's enough for me in this swim. I fancy another pull, so I'm going to move back down there and see if we can get another one. So today that little tiny stinger has really helped us out there. You can see the bait and the hooks outside of its mouth. Should be a little bit careful with this one. There is the stinger. Oh, right down there. Come on, mister. So even though they're only small fish, big long forceps are absolutely essential. Another cracking little pike. I was just about to um, wrap our little video up. We've been out this morning. Uh, we've had shed loads of pike. And I've just hooked what I'm hoping is possibly a bit of a better one. Do me carpy bit. Well, that's, that's what finesse pike fishing is about. That drag going, they're not big fish. Again, this is only a couple of pounds, but um, they put up a good account for themselves.
I genuinely don't know what number of pike that is today. It's 14, 15. This is the biggest. You can see that they're absolutely crammed full of these fry. That's why we've had so many. This is also the longest at 80 centimeters. We haven't weighed any. We haven't really measured any. We've just been out for a bit of fun. Um, I hope you've uh, learned a bit from the finesse pike tactics. Please don't go out there fishing waters full of big, big doubles, 20 pounders with this finesse gear. It's not really for that. It's for fish up to this sort of size, for fun and for catching lots of fish. Um, as you can see, I mean, what a morning. It's just brilliant. So um, please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the Fox Rage YouTube channel. You'll get early updates on all our new videos. And uh, yeah, tight lines. Go and catch a few. Well then guys, well that's about me done for today. We've had a fantastic little session. Caught loads of fish. Uh, like I said, I hope you lot have learned some of it. And you can um, put a few of these techniques into your own fishing. Uh, we've got a little bit of a prize running today, a little bit of a competition. So um, if you'd like the chance to win a selection of the Pro Shads, there she goes. The Pro Shads that I've been using today, um, some of the light wire traces, and I suppose we'll uh, chuck a packet of jig heads in there as well. It's quite simple. All you've got to do is write a comment in the comments box, box below with what rod I've been using today. So that is just write a comment in the comments box with what rod I've been using for my finesse pike fishing. Uh, we'll pick a winner at random. So good luck everyone, tight lines, and I hope you've learned a bit.